A new book by a former IS officer has recently made the headlines. The book We Also Make Policy details how the finance ministry works. Today our guest is the author of the book, Subhash Chandra Garg. Hi, Shiv. How are you? Good, sir. Mr. Garg, uh, welcome to News Laundry Interviews. My pleasure. You have worked under three finance ministers, uh, Arun Jaitley, Piyush Goyal, Nirmala Sitaraman, who is the incumbent. Uh, in the capacity of Economic Affairs Secretary and Finance Secretary between 2017-2019. If I could start the interview by asking you, how do you rate these three finance ministers on a scale of 1 to 3, depending on their weaknesses and strengths? See, Shiv, I don't like evaluating and ranking. It's not a good thing to do, and because I don't know what ranking captures. Hmm. Everyone has strengths and some have weaknesses as well, right? But in your book, you were slightly unsparing towards Nimal Sitaraman, where you use adjectives like she was brusque and she was glum and um, acerbic, stiff. These are uh, not judgmental. The, mm. These are intended to describe mm. the particular transactional nature. Mm that whatever was happening. Mm. So if you uh, sort of snap in mm. a way, mm. saying, don't think I can violate you. Yeah, I was, right. I was about to come to the, so, the quotes uh, that we is used. It, is yeah. it, uh, this is a kind of acerbic, right? Mm. So this is to describe the nature of the exchange mm. or transaction. Mm. This is not to judge her. Mm. But you said from the word go, it seemed that Sitaraman had some bias against you. And That's correct. Some of the some of the quotes that you use, uh, quotes of hers. Uh, one is, "What do you think? I cannot violate you. I would. Uh, don't treat me like a bachi." Did you do a lot of mansplaining to her, or like what made your relations with her so strained? See, uh, I have recounted uh, mm. right from the time she came. Mm to our visit to Japan, G20, uh, yeah. where also she said at one stage, uh, I hope I didn't disappoint you. Disappoint you. you. Right? Yeah. Uh, or the exchange in that uh, meeting, pre-budget meeting, mm. where first she said, uh, no, no, I'll go by what you say. And I'll, and then suddenly after some, she turned back, says, no, no, don't think I can't fight at you. And later on when I went to her, to genuinely ask whether there was some misunderstanding or did I uh, say something. Mm. Then um, uh, when she said uh, that you treat me like a bachi mm. or you bitching around uh, uh, bitching about me, about me I, uh, for a moment I was actually uh, uh, shaken. Mm. Uh, bitching around is not my nature. I don't even talk to many people. Mm. Uh, I hadn't gone to anyone. In, in fact, the only exchange which I also recount uh, is when Nirpen Mishra one day asked me uh, uh, whether everything is going on well in the uh, in the department. Nirpen the Mishra, uh, uh, principal secretary, principal secretary, to, secretary Prime to Prime Minister, mm. because another secretary had actually complained to him mm. to say that. Uh, about something about her way, her, her style of functioning. But at the same time, there were other problems also. You had differences with maybe PMO on 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 issues related to uh, subsidies to farmers, fertilizer subsidy, and you you said that we should move to DBT, direct benefit transfer. And Nirpendra Mishra and other officials PMO did not agree with that thought, saying that it could be political suicide. It was in the run-up to the Lok Sabha elections. Do you think it also contributed or you lost the confidence of PMO also at the time? See, this was a very uh, peculiar relationship. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Nirpendra Mishra is one of the outstanding civil servants hmm. and he's so decisive. Hmm one of the very few officers who would be able to hear you very well, very quickly mm. and be able to come to a decision and then take a decision, mm. right? Which is what is required in the, in the Prime Minister's mm. office. Mm. He may have again, as I said earlier, a very different view about uh, things. Mm. Uh, 
India opted for socialistic pattern of society, some other people opted for uh, capitalistic pattern. These are very valid uh, uh, issues where you can take different, right? Mm. He must have genuinely believed that uh, uh, fertilizer subsidy is not the go uh, way to go, right? It's mm. uh, uh, because it will create enormous amount of problems. I have no problems with that, right? But in my judgment, uh, after very successful demonstration of hmm. LPG subsidy by the same government, hmm. many people used to think that LPG subsidy is also not a uh, possible thing. But this was done, demonstrated very well, right? Likewise, um, uh, I thought uh, that the the way to go. So, in one of the budget meetings in 2018 or so, I proposed this. Now, moving towards. Uh, uh, the issue of electoral bonds. Arun Jetli was the brainchild behind uh, electoral yes. bonds. Was this the best solution at the time or uh, I mean in terms of political funding, how do you see it? I, I think this was the most practically implementable solution mm. of the situation we had in the mm. and that's why I have recounted this in great detail mm. that the operating system in mm. the country was a cash donation. Mm. Uh, not the company uh, law uh, approved uh, donation system mm. where the companies can of, could have officially given, claimed this as a, an expenditure deduction mm. and this was uh, lawful. That system, mm. that avenue was available, but this was not used. Mm. The operating system was that whoever wanted to give a donation mm. would get the cash mm. And that cash would be handed over to the political party, who would also not keep a record who who gave it to. And since the law had a loophole mm. that twenty thousand rupees or less, you don't have to keep individual record. Mm. And therefore, you just show uh, numerous receipts issued for twenty thousand or less. Mm. And there was no so that was a obnoxious system which was operating. Mm. Who gave this money? Where did this money come from? The which political party received? Uh, how did it spend, etc. Because this was all operating in ca cash system, mm. right? So instead of that, or in place of that, what the system was designed was much better. It was not ideal, mm. but it um, it made sure that the company which is giving is giving it from the official uh, uh, account, and official account maintained in the in the in the banks. So that trail of who is giving how much. Mm. Is, is is established. Uh, how were your relations with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi? You he is the master. One, one, one of the calls that you received when ATMs were running dry in 2018, you received a call from Prime Minister Modi. I think he was on, on an overseas trip and he said that you are my Arun Jaitley and you should resolve the situation as soon as possible and you assured him like things. Yeah, but the Prime Minister was always concerned about mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, not only on this issue, but overall, how do you see his attitude I towards? I always Europe found him yeah. extremely engaged, mm. a very good listener who wanted to know the uh, the roots and the uh, right. Of course, he had uh, his own uh, way to decide things. Uh, finally, he he would take many decisions. But the ability to listen, I have also recounted a couple of meetings where which went on for two to three hours mm. uh, without coming to any resolution and he patiently listened uh, to many of those. I want to know your views on farm reforms. The government had to roll back all these farm reforms because there was... Uh, See, I have there written was extensively deep mistrust. Uh, about this farm wells in my book, The Dollar Ten Trillion Dream. Mm. One of the most undesirable thing which we picked up from the British is this secretive mm. way of formulating laws. Mm. And that's, of course, this seems to have got accentuated mm. during the current regime. Mm. Um, uh, but this is uh, perhaps into our DNA. Mm. This will require a major surgical it mm. was very with very great difficulty that the uh, RTI mm. uh, was brought in, which has also been partly undone mm. later on. I think we'll need uh, a citizens' movement for making more transparency about you know mm. many countries in the world have moved towards 
uh, medium term budgeting they will put their budget proposals for public consultation beforehand uh, what kind of program they want to do it mm. uh, of course the government is the final authority to decide what to do mm. uh, and what to take to the parliament but the consultation provides you that if there are some hidden problems or some weaknesses or something has been missed out hmm. or there is some better alternative hmm. i think that's a better way to do it free mein itna hi milega to watch the full unedited interview you have to subscribe to news laundry and pay to keep news free because we don't run an advertising all our money comes from subscribers like you and that is how public service journalism is paid for all the studio lights the cameras all that you see on our website it all comes from subscribers so do subscribe click on the subscription link watch all the interviews unedited and pay for public interest journalism